Shall we do a long video today? Let's do a long video today. You have to come along with me for the ride. There will be bookmarks for the three different sections I want to talk about today. The first is Instruct GPT and that new model that is the default now. The second is Brain Machine Interfaces. And the third is an actual hands-on demonstration. Let's jump straight in. I actually haven't shown Instruct GPT. It came out two months ago, the end of January. 2022 and it actually replaced all of the standard models inside OpenAI's playground and there's a reason for that <laughs> there's a reason that I haven't shown it is because it is so different to DaVinci Classic or DaVinci Legacy that it's actually not doing what I want it to do for things like Lita AI and Aurora AI it doesn't actually work nicely as a chatbot for everything else it works way, way better. Have a look at these stats. I did a one pager that you can have a stare at. The new Instruct GPT by OpenAI is 84% more truthful compared to classic GPT-3. It's got nearly two years more knowledge in it because it's been trained on data sets up to June, 2021. So it knows about COVID. It knows about the Suez Canal. It probably knows more than certainly GPT-3, which is, um, finishing up around 2018. It's got a larger context window. Instruct GPT has nearly twice the size of a window where you can put in text. So we could put in about three pages of text for something like Lita, where it has a context window of 2048 tokens. Now we're allowed 4,000 tokens inside that prompt. And remember that the prompt and the context window includes both the response and the prompt that you fed to it. So that all gets added up. It means that now we can do twice as much. It should be 58% less hallucinative <laughs> in that now it is not making up stuff as much. And one of the reasons for that is that Instruct GPT is the same data set as GPT-3, the same parameters. So DaVinci is still 175 billion parameters but it has been run through fine tuning with real human beings, real informed and trained human beings that know what they're doing. And it's come out with this beautifully fine tuned model that is now the default. Also at the top there, I've put the initialism Triple H. This is an acronym that came out of Anthropic AI. And you'll know that Anthropic are the team based in San Francisco that basically split off from OpenAI very recently. They've been doing research that focuses only on alignment and ethics within artificial intelligence rather than just the technology. So OpenAI is still doing breaking the boundaries and trying to get a better and smarter model, whereas Anthropic is making sure that it is aligned with where we want to go, what we think is important, even if we get it wrong in the prompt, they want to make sure that AI is aligned with us. So this alignment objective, Triple H, is to be helpful honest and harmless. I've said useful, truthful, and careful. It, of course, was coined by Anthropic, but I'm going to say that OpenAI's Instruct GPT is actually meeting this requirement, this alignment guideline, really, really well. It is uh, it is a useful model. It's telling the truth more often than not, 84% more truthful, and it's being very careful. So where you find DaVinci Classic just going off into these tangents, spinning falsehoods all over the place, that happens less frequently with Instruct GPT, and we'll have a look at that in the demonstration a little bit later. As I said, this is the default engine now. So if you go into the OpenAI Playground, you'll notice that the engine is set as um, this Instruct GPT. It won't actually use that terminology. It's slightly different terminology, but you can have a look uh, inside it. It says text dash Da Vinci dash 002. And this is telling us that this is the Instruct GPT. It's the second version out of beta, so it's it's been tested, it's been fine-tuned, and they found that with all of these metrics that we just ran through, it's far, far better than GPT-3 Classic. So they're using it across the board as the default. I'm going to be in the demonstration running Text DaVinci 002 for the very first time, I think, in my videos, because I avoid it with chatbots for sure. 
and we're going to play around with just how much more truthful it is and how much less hallucinative it is. We may test out the knowledge window, we'll, we'll have a look and we may also test out the context window. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let me show you the script that I'll be using. This has been uh, shown before in one of my videos where I did GPT-3 hooked up to my house as well as just describing how I speak to GPT-3 over the command line interface. So you can do the same thing yourself in terminal. Um, and here it is, it's using the engine that we just talked about, text-davinci-002. I'm gonna use a lower temperature so that it is more deterministic and less creative. So I'm setting the temperature here just above deterministic, just above giving us the standard output all the time. Uh, I'm setting it to 0 0.3. And this prompt is pretty funny. <laughs> You'll see why in a moment. We're gonna hook this up or we're going to use a prop to hook this up to what might be a prototype brain machine interface. And when we're doing that, we wanna tell it that it is an expert. We're finding more and more that when you prompt these language models with I am an expert in this or I'm an expert in that or I'm a specialist in this or I've researched this or I've fact checked that, it's going to be more honest, more truthful. So here's our prompt in full. I am a genius. My answers are concise and clear. Question, that's the user input, and then answer, colon. So it knows that it has to answer that question as a genius and be concise and clear about it. No avoiding the question. <laughs> I'm also trimming down the response to 40 tokens, uh, which is not very much, but that's okay. I wanna make sure that it can do essentially an SMS's worth of output just under that. Okay, BMIs, brain machine interfaces. You may have also heard these called BCIs, brain computer interfaces. At the moment, we actually haven't standardized the terminology, so you might even see BMI slash BCI. I'm using BMI today, and the reason for that is a lot of my partnerships or memberships use this. So have a look at places like IEEE, some of the big journals. Elon Musk's Neuralink is calling it a BMI. Uh, right next door to me, well, across the country from me, the University of Queensland with their massive Brain Institute also uses this BMI term terminology. Whereas BCI, yes, it's being used also by the IEEE. We'll talk about open water using it. And of course it's in Wikipedia. A lot of people lean on Wikipedia as their single source of truth. But just for today, I'm gonna to be using the phrase or the initialism BMI to refer to a brain machine interface. You may have seen my videos already about how we can hook up the brain to these kind of language models, these large language models like GPT-3, and there's been so much progress made in this in the last few years. You will have seen Elon Musk's Neuralink where they've got a wired interface. They actually remove a very small section of the skull and insert some very, very fine wires, finer than even uh, a hair, directly into the brain. You may know also about DARPA's beautiful uh, BMI that's already getting traction. We're gonna talk a little bit about open water in a moment. And of course, that one is probably the most exciting one. You may have also heard about BrainGate. It's a BMI that's come out of Brown and Stanford universities, and it's had some success already. This is another wired one and you may have seen the article just this year, around March, April, 2022, where this brain machine interface has been applied surgically, invasively into a man's skull. So it's directly um, interfacing with his brain. And he's actually, as a locked in syndrome man, been able to communicate with his son using this brain machine interface. So really magical things happening with this ability that we're having through science and technology to finally be able to have in and out through our brain without messing around with uh, just science fiction. It's becoming reality. <laughs>
I mentioned open water just a moment ago. Dr. Mary Lou Jepson was part of Facebook, an executive at Facebook, now Meta. She was an executive at Google. She gave us the One Laptop Per Child project, which actually has seen millions and millions of laptops distributed around the world to different regions. And she started up a business called Open Water just a few years ago, and it has been gaining massive traction, including a device that entered beta testing last year. Here's a video of her from four years ago, and she's showing how we can use red LED lights that can penetrate the bone of our skull. Uh, this is pretty magical stuff. More magical that we've had four years of technology advances since then, but she was demonstrating how we might be able to use brain-machine interfaces without cracking into the skull. We can effectively use this wirelessly just by shining light through the bone and being able to have in and out processing, in and out communication between the brain and the computer or the machine. Really interesting. Have a look here. She's got a... Uh, a belt for MRIs around the waist if we want to look at tissue and organ stuff, but also there's the example there of wearing a cap like a ski cap or a beanie <laughs> or another kind of ga a cap. I'm sure Apple will give us some sort of halo or even some sort of wireless device that is uh, able to be put behind the ear or we don't even know yet, but it's very, very close. This is the next technology to look out for and uh, I'm going to be demonstrating just a a silly version of this today so we can see how these large language models may actually help us through brain machine interfaces. And this has been documented fairly extensively. I talked about this in one of my visas, one of my visualizations back in September 2019 that BMIs are not just helping people with locked in syndrome or people that have memory loss or people that have paralysis, strokes, brain damage, of course, BMIs are very, very important for resolving these disabilities. They can also help with disorders, everything from depression and anxiety right through to insomnia or even addiction and pain. Wouldn't that be amazing just to have that resolved with a, a brain machine interface? We could look at how this could help out with learning difficulties from ADHD through all the disses from dyslexia through to dyspraxia auditory processing as an example. So we're resolving these kind of, um, well, disabilities, disorders and difficulties, but wouldn't it be cool if we also looked at augmenting human biological intelligence? And this is already in the works. So increasing full-scale intelligence, increasing creativity, increasing our memory, and enabling rapid processing, enhanced thinking, and even thought transfer. This is some of the amazing benefits that we have to look forward to with brain machine interfaces. All right, let's jump into the demonstration. This is the silliest thing I could think of to be able to demonstrate what a brain machine interface might be like. Now I've tried a few ways to show this, uh, but it may not be coming across in the chatbots like the Lita AI and the Una AI where you've got someone external to interact with. The brain machine interface is completely different to that. It's my obsession, it's this integrated AI. It's within us, we've got access to it. It's not scary, you can turn it on and off. It's not drilled into your skull. It's wireless, like your phone is, so you can do notifications uh, and silence and do not disturb mode and all that kind of thing. Let's use the script, but let's also use a bit of a prop. I got this off eBay. I know it's a bit silly, that's really the point. Uh, it's not a real bit brain machine interface. It's acting as what might be possible if we uh, plug our brains into this magic of the language models. So it's got some fiber optics into it, does some flashing. The brain machine interface may or may not do that, but I chose it because the red LEDs reminded me a bit of the open water version that we had. So let's start off with something that reminds me of the opposite of idiocracy. Let's jump in here. I'm actually gonna be using typing, in this case, copy and pasting, but you could of course use a microphone. You could use a microphone with a switch or you could use something with a wake word because uh, all of that technology is here. I'm just using built-in technology. All of this stuff is free. Every time I ask a question to GPT-3, even the largest DaVinci model that's part of this Instruct GPT, so I'm still using the 175 billion parameter model, uh, it's still only about one cent per question. So that's 
I mean, it's not a lot of cash. Here we go. What do plants crave? <laughs> Water, sunlight, and nutrients. Excellent. So this might be the opposite of idiocracy. Imagine having access to that immediately just by thinking it, not even by saying it, certainly not by typing it or copy, copy pasting like we're doing today, but having complete access to that immediately. That's exciting to me. So let's try something a little bit more basic, like what is a BCI? Main computer interface, BCI, is a system that enables communication between an external device and the brain. That's really cool. Notice that the time there is pretty much instant and that's because the prompt is a lot smaller. If you have watched my GPT-3 hooked up to the house one, uh, you'll notice that the, the prompt is huge. So it took GPT-3 10 seconds to prompt and respond. And then I think I was using Synantic there, which takes another seven or eight seconds to process. Remember also that we're using a lower temperature here, so it's a bit more deterministic, which means that you're going to get consistent responses uh, for each prompt. So even if we redid them, they'd be very similar. Here's a fun one. Goat is to kid Maybe. as human is to what? And I just completely spoke over him because he's so fast with that one second inference time and returning back in. So I'm not using Synantic here, which is normally six or seven or eight seconds. I'm using Mac OS's Speak, which is very, very fast. I used that example there because GPT-3 is amazing at analogies. In fact, it does better than university students. So anyone that's sitting the SAT scores a particular score and the GPT-3 model is outdoing people who sit for the SAT. What about this question? Should I feed my cat a vegan diet? No, cats are obligate carnivores and require animal-based proteins to thrive. <laughs> Imagine everyone in the world having that hooked up to their brain so that they have this higher full-scale IQ than we currently have. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't that be amazing? But also for applicable conversation. My health insurer keeps calling me for a review. What should I say? I am not interested in participating in a health insurance review at this time. Thank you. Excellent. Might help with negotiation, compromise, and arguments. My best friend wants me to pay for dinner at his house. What should I say? You don't need to pay for dinner. Your friend is just being polite. I have had this with standard Da Vinci, actually. It's great that we had something that is not exactly working. My best friend wants to pay for dinner at his house. I don't think I that's a good idea. What about this negotiation? My boss wants to lower my wages. What should I say? There are a few things you could say in this situation. You could try to negotiate with your boss and explain why you deserve to be paid more. You could also look for another job that. <laughs> Notice he cuts off there after 40 tokens. This one might be very useful at a restaurant. Of course, you've got calculator on your phone. You may or may not be able to do this with some of the um, intelligent assistance already, but what about split a $226.50 bill three ways, what's the total plus 20% tip for each person? The total is $271.80 and each person would pay $90.60. Amazing. I haven't checked the math there. Note also that GPT-3 was not trained explicitly on maths. It went and taught itself maths. It taught itself the operators, it taught itself the equal sign and what happens on both sides of that sign. Incredible stuff. What about this one? Let's have a play with this one. Why is my belly swollen? You are pregnant. Pregnancy causes the belly to swell as the baby grows inside the mother's womb. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's, uh, let's give it a bit of a heads up there. I'm a man. Why is my belly swollen? <laughs> <laughs> there could be many reasons for a swollen belly in a man, including fluid retention or bloating, constipation, overeating, gastritis or other stomach. Excellent. He cuts off there after 40 tokens. You could, of course, make that uh, not quite 4,000 tokens because we've still got a prompt in there, but you could make that a lot longer, nearly a thousand, oh sorry, nearly a hundred times longer. Fly me from Perth to London. Besides direct... Give me three options for transit. One, Perth to London via Singapore. Two, Perth to London via Dubai. Three, Perth to London via Hong Kong. Awesome. I think they are all real options. 
Let's have a jump into this one. My friend wants to meet for lunch today. I need more protein. Where should we go? If your friend wants to meet for lunch and you need more protein, why not try a local salad bar or sandwich shop? You can usually find something there that will fit your needs. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to getting that truth percentage up even higher. We saw that InstructGPT is 84% more truthful than classic GPT-3, but all of the labs are working now on groundedness and making sure that these models are fact-checking or at least not lying on the way out. So let's try that same prompt again, not changing anything. My friend wants to meet for lunch today, need more protein, where should we go? If your friend wants to meet for lunch and you need more protein, you could go to a restaurant that serves salads or soup. That is a, that is a pretty poor uh, response there. Is he going to give us anything better? If your friend wants to meet for lunch today. I don't think so. I'm not going to let him finish. What about also having tailored and instant meditations and affirmations sent to your brain? I am a genius. I have a photographic memory. I can recall any information instantly and accurately. My mind is clear, focused, and calm. I am able to think clearly and make decisions quickly. <laughs> Excellent. Just a bit of a play today uh, with my fake, doesn't do anything, brain machine interface flashing hat. <laughs> Just to show what I am seeing for the next piece of major technological progress, we've already got the large language models and some researchers are being quoted as saying this is artificial general intelligence. Some are being a little bit safer and saying this is definitely the pathway to artificial general intelligence. We've also got brain machine interfaces and they're going very, very well. This is all very, very exciting in terms of progress. Look out for brain machine interfaces being combined with large language models coming very soon. In some cases already here, um, certainly in testing and research. So I'm very, very keen to see that get into the hands of consumers. Picture something again like Apple where it might be a halo headband uh, on top or around the forehead. It might be something behind the ear. It might be something that even hangs like necklace and has something that can uh, be encoded directly to your brain. It's gonna be fascinating to be able to play around with this directly. I'm considering doing a live stream version of this Instruct GPT so you can ask questions directly. Uh, and if you'd like to do that, please leave a comment down there and we'll get it set up because it would be great to have questions that come in live and you can also see just how quickly GPT-3 and the voice respond. It's so, so fast. As you saw there, sometimes in one or two seconds, Mac OS's speak is nearly instant. Fantastic, thank you so much for joining me for a longer video today. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.